This week's Sunday tutorial project is this adorable microwave oven with an opening door. Now you will find that today's tutorial is done in two parts and that's just because I had too much footage to make a reasonable, reasonable length video. It had to be cut down. But when I filmed, I filmed intending to be a single video. Hopefully I have broken it in a place that makes sense to you. So enjoy part one. If part two is not up yet, it will be soon. All right, our microwave is actually made out of simple materials. This is a piece of one of those clamshell boxes from the bakery. I think I, I think I got muffins in this particular one. Um, I've just cleaned the lid off and I'm going to attempt not to lose this on my desk. That's always the biggest trick. A cracker box. A simple cracker box. We're going to use multiple layers to make our thickness. And then a piece of poster board from Dollar Tree. Now, for your measurements, you don't have to measure on this one. I've created for you a PDF with the patterns all on it. All you have to do is go to my blog post, the link is in the description box, and there will be a link to download this PDF. I do ask that you just use this only for personal use because it's my design and I've, you know, I made it up. But you've got all your pattern pieces, you've got your little, even you have your little panel for the dolls to use to make their microwave work. So the first thing I'm going to do is get these cut out. So I'm going to cut out all the pattern pieces then I'll come back and show you how I go about cutting out enough pieces to get the right thickness. Alright, one thing I forgot to mention on the PDF before you cut out anything double check that this little square down here is actually an inch in all directions. If it's not exactly an inch, your printer's off and you'll need to make some corrections before you print. Now, I'm not going to do the front or the door yet. Those pieces are cut slightly different. What I have here is the side front, the side, actually three sides. Yeah, we have three side pieces. The bottom piece, the top piece, and the back piece. Out of all of these pieces, I want to stack up my cereal box or my cracker box in this case thick enough to equal an eighth of an inch thick and here's how I do it. First I start out by putting a piece of double stick tape on the back of my pattern piece and I stick it someplace where there's no folds. I'm going to put the rest of these off to the side and I usually try to work with just one piece pattern piece at a time excuse me I'm coughing a lot the last few days our, our air quality is really really bad due to some forest fires not too far away and uh, everybody's coughing All right, I'm gonna cut this up and I'm not even using my straight edge on this I will on the door in the front so I've got that tape down very carefully now you'll have to measure depending on the box you're using. Yours might be a different thickness. And I wouldn't recommend a Bisquick box for this one because they're a lot thicker. I didn't size that this for that. Alright, so there's one copy. I know from playing with my box that I need four layers to make the right size. So. I'm going to try and peel my double stick tape up with my pattern piece. So I can use the same piece of double stick tape all four times. And it worked. Now I'm going to cut out this three more times. Oops, my tape is... Make sure that your pattern piece is down flat. And you can make a straight cut every time. I have to get another piece of box. So I'm going to go ahead and get four of these cut out, and then I'll be back. 
All right, so I've got four pieces cut out of my box, plus I cut an additional piece out of my poster board. Um, and it's pretty close. We are going to, this is going to be the inside of the bottom. So I just leave this piece, this piece taped on here. It's going to get covered in the end anyway. So I'm going to take, that way, the reason I leave this on here, I'll go through that first. That way I know for sure which, pat, which piece I've got. I don't have to figure out which is the top, which is the back, where's the bottom. I know which piece is which. It won't matter. So, I'm going to spread a little glue on. Because I had all of these, the, the pattern actually taped on and cut around it, they should be pretty close to being exact size. We will do a little filing off at the end. I put two together and then I glue the other two together. What am I doing? Yeah, that's right. So now I have two stacks. I'm going to glue the two stacks together. And I'm keeping the cardboard side out. The printed sides are going to be towards the center. Make sure that you spread your glue all the way to all the edges because you want these edges really glued together. But don't use too much glue. Too much glue will ooze out all over everything and make a mess. Now, on the side that doesn't have the pattern piece glued on, or taped on, I'm going to put some glue. And poster board has two sides. It has a shinier side and a duller side. Decide which one you want to use towards the outside. And I'm going to use the smoother side. The one that felt the smoothest is going out. Now make sure you don't have glue all over your fingers. And I like to clamp these together. Oops, I got glue on that. I'll have to cover that when I get done. Being very careful that everything is staying lined up. Measuring, you know, having this all cut really accurately is going to make this go together a lot easier. So with the, I'm going to treat the top, the back, the three sides, and the piece that's labeled side front all exactly the same way. When I get that done, I'll be back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, now we are going to deal with the piece that's labeled the front. And this one I do a little differently. I don't cut out that piece in the center until I have it taped down. And I don't find the need, if you need to, use your straight edge for this short of a piece. I don't really find it necessary. those corners, being careful to stay on the lines and to not cut your finger. And this one we're only going to cut two of the paperboard and then two of, or and then one of the, um, the poster board. So we're going to look and make sure that looks good. Now I'm going to cut it out, and I just use my scissors for most of this. I find it just as easy for these small pieces. Because remember, this is pretty small. I'm going to cut off long so that I can cut down. I like to have 
if I'm cutting something precisely, I want to have it have the part I'm trying to line up with away on the side towards my non-dominant hand from my scissors so that I can line it up really carefully. Now I'm trying to stay under camera and still see and I keep forgetting to check that I'm under camera. That one's not quite cut where I want it. So I want to make sure this is cut perfectly where I want it. Now, I'm going to do this, like I said, this one is being done a little differently. We're going to glue this down. I'm going to take it off of there so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to spread the glue out. And I'm going to let this glue sit for a while. I found it was really difficult to keep this opening squared and the line straight if I tried to cut, tried to pull the pattern off. So I'm going to let that glue sit. I'm actually going to set my glue bottle on it. And when that glue is dry, then I'll come back and we'll do the next part. All right, my glue is pretty much dry. It's just a little dampish around the edges. So now we're going to cut this out. I just find this is the easiest way to keep this all the same, you know, consistent on all the layers. If you need to, you can go back and trim, like that did not cut. There. Now I'm going to cut this. I should have cut this while it was still there, but... And we can use an emery board to neaten up these edges once we're done. In fact, that's what we're going to do after all this glue is completely dry. You can leave this to dry all the way, or you can do it when the glue is pretty much set. The thing you want to do, you want it dry enough that the pieces don't shift. And that's the main thing that we're after here. So we don't want our pieces to shift. And I don't want to cut through. I almost cut through over there. So I go from the corner out in towards the middle. Get that out. Neaten it up a little bit. See that one? I'm not quite as close as I would like. This is really just a trim for the front of the microwave, so it doesn't it doesn't need to be quite as thick. We want this trimmed as best as we can though because we are going to, on our next step, glue this to the poster board and then do the same thing to cut it out. So we need this back side trimmed really well. see just there you could probably see how fragile this little piece is and the door is going to be just as fragile although we won't have to cut as many we won't cut very many pieces of it all right there we go now I'm gonna cut, do I have a piece that I had yes piece of the tat of the poster board problem here. It's a little better. And 
again, we're going to spread the glue out. I did it this way for a couple of reasons. Number one, this way I know that everything is the same size. You don't have, you guys don't have to do a lot of measuring to do the same thing I did because face it, measuring in 112 scale can be a challenge sometimes because we're getting down to eighth inches and sometimes less than an eighth of an inch. I think for the most part, eighth inch is the smallest I did on this one. But if I can draw up the, the pattern on my computer and create a PDF for you, now that I'm doing that, I think that will be the best way to do this. So the glue bottle is just heavy enough to help that be weighted down. I'm going to let that glue dry, and when that's dry enough that it won't shift, I'll be back and we'll move on. All right, now this glue is dry. So I'm going to cut this out. I want to get right up against that. So. Now, then, after I get this done, the next step is really important. First, let's get this inside out. Now we're going to take all our pieces and keep those labels on. That way you know what you've got. It just makes it so much easier. Little clamps away as I take them off. I have a working space here. I ran out of uh, binder clips. I had to use some my pins. Now, we're going to take all of these pieces and we're going to sand all the edges so that everything is nice and flat. Because remember, you've got multiple layers. Um, you can use sandpaper or you can use an emery board, whichever works best for you. Um, this step is really important, and when you get to these, this one with the opening, be sure that you sand this opening. And if you've got spaces that are maybe not quite trimmed right, get in there and just make sure everything is cut to the line. This is. This step is important because if you don't do this, all that work you went to is going to be for nothing because everything needs to be cut really precisely. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to sit down with my sandpaper and my emery board and my pieces. And I'm going to get everything sanded and all just perfect. And when I get that done, I'll be back and we can start assembly. Alright, so everything is, the glue is completely dry and everything's sanded. We're going to put the front side piece over to the side where we don't lose it because we don't need that yet. I like to start by doing a little bit of a dry fit to make sure oops, this is going to all fit the way I think it is. And we need to put this together with the poster board sides to the correct side. All right. It's got a little bit of a warp in it. That's okay. All right, so take the bottom, put the poster board side up, find the back. And I'm actually going to run the glue on this side. You know, we're going to try not to have a whole bunch of glue 
oozing out, but if some does, that's fine. Because we're working with cardboard, you know, paperboard and poster board, it's going to glue pretty easily. All I'm doing here is I can turn this. I put on my tile so I won't glue it to my desk. from the tile I can always pop it up. Now the front piece, we're going to turn this backwards and we're going to put it this way. It's important that the solid side goes the correct direction, um, but this way we have the side that's going to show will be covered. It's going to go like that. Now we're going to take these side pieces and we're actually using three side pieces. Ooh, that's, that's right. All right. Now make sure that you put the sides in the correct direction because so it's a side right side up. Now glue on three sides. If we continue gluing all of this while the glue is still not set up, we can get everything adjusted and put together. And we're going to cover up all these peeps areas where the pattern is visible. Now, we're going to take the. I need a wet wipe. I am sticking to everything. And I am using tacky glue because tacky glue does hold really well for this. Now, second side piece, making sure that the side with the poster board, this one's going to line up with this opening, and we want the side with the poster board towards that opening. And we're going to try our best to get it straight and where we don't see the edges. Oopsie. All right, I'm going to have to adjust this. There we go. I'm trying to get it nice and straight. So that looks like that. We will still see some of that there, but we'll disguise that later. Now the th final, third and final side piece and this one doesn't really matter which way it goes. I'm going to put it with the poster board side in simply to be consistent and so that I can make sure that my writing is going the right way. It's upside down, but that's fine. Because they are not square, so you do need to make sure you've got them the right direction. All right, now I'm going to test for this. Is this going to fit? Yes, it is. creeping in just a little bit. All right. Make sure that's all where you want it. I'll put glue on the tops of all of these. And on the two long sides of this. Again, making sure that the uh, you can see the word top when you put it in. Now this glue needs to dry. While we have this here, we are going to cover this with our strip. We have our little piece here. And my thought was, we'll cut it off right close. I'm going to, if I get the glue off of my fingers, that's the main thing here. Okay, let's fold this up. 
Now if everything printed and was cut correctly, this should just fit the front. And it does. So, take a pair of scissors and cut diagonally to the corners. And this is going to be too wide. And I'm not going to put glue on the front. I'm just going to put glue on the edges and then I'll glue it in the back. My fingers are so full of glue now. All right. Trying to make sure your fingers are fairly dry so you don't ruin the ink that you uh, printed this with. much in here. And we're going to cut the excess paper off later once this dries. We get this wrapped as neatly as you can and set it aside to dry. That's all we need to do now. We're going to let this all dry, and when I come back, we can move on to the next step. All right, I brought you in a little closer. I'm going to do my best to stay under camera. So we're going to go ahead and trim off these extra little tails. We're not going to glue this on yet, but I will show you where it's going to go. This is going to fit right here. Now, this step that I'm going to do now is totally optional, but I want the front of my control panel, which I see I did get on a little crooked. I could have gotten that on straighter. If I wasn't trying to do it under camera, I probably would have. But what I've got here, let me brush it on. I want to protect the front of this panel. And this is just an uh, inkjet print. It's not, I don't have a laser printer. So I'm just coating this with a nice coat, not a thick coat, just a nice light coat of triple thick. Because that will protect it. It'll make it look a little shiny. It'll make it just look a little more realistic. So I'm going to let that dry all the way. Then we're going to start working on the door and then cover the outside. <laughs> 